Good morning, everybody. My name is Lisa White. I'm the Health Promotion Manager. I'm hoping that you can see me. I hope I don't have this the wrong way, but <laughs> you never know these days with how I treat technology. Welcome to Monday Morning Health Promotion Shorts. This morning's Health Promotion Short topic is on motivation, which is perfect timing, I think, for a lot of people who are trying to make lifestyle changes or to stay motivated working at home, uh, whatever the task might be. Um, there's a couple of types of motivation that I'd like to talk to you about. Um, there's extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. So extrinsic motivation is sort of things that are on the outside. So people, family, friends, neighbors, coaches, teachers, mentors, groups, those would be sort of things um, on the outside of you that may be motivating you. There's also intrinsic motivation, which is sort of on the inside, so your internal motivation, so connecting with your values and beliefs, um, your interests, your inspiration, those types of things. So one of the things that you can do to, to sort of try and get yourself motivated is what I tend to do first is I sort of write down my demotivators. I take a list, I get a piece of paper, I write on a list what are my barriers, what are the things in my life that are a demotivator for me to sort of reach the goal that I'm trying to set for myself. Of course we have to set the goal that we're trying to obtain and get motivated to do, but writing down your demotivators can sort of help you maybe potentially overcome some of those barriers or what can you do or what are some of the strategies that you could do to overcome some of those barriers. So for example if you're looking to change your uh, workouts, let's say you're trying to get more physically active. Okay, so maybe some of your demotivators might be like lack of equipment, is it lack of money, time, are you home full time with kids, is, are you the only one there, are there other people around, is there, do you have low energy levels, are you bored, are you afraid of failure, or maybe you just don't know where to start. So identifying your, your barriers and evaluating those and putting some strategies in there to overcome some of those is a good start. For example, if the gym is closed right now, so a lot of you military members out there, you may not have access to equipment. So that might be something that you're used to doing. You're used to getting out in the weight room and being in the gym and, and working out and you're not, you're not able to do that right now. So lack of equipment could be something that's a demotivator for you because you're used to being um, in the gym environment. So if that's one of your demotivators, then you have to look at what would be something that I can do to overcome that. And uh, the fitness staff here at 14 Wing are providing online programs for you. So maybe you'll sort of tap into some of those great fitness programs that they're offering to you. So that could be one way to overcome uh, that barrier. So when you're getting started, you have to sort of look at, okay, what do I have access to when it comes to physical activity? What equipment do I have? How much time do I have? Where do I find it? So you're kind of in that preparation phase. Jeanette did a good job last week talking about um, the stages of change. So if you're somebody who is trying to get motivated, first of all, you're setting your goal, you're writing down your demotivators or your barriers, you're coming up with strategies to overcome some of those, and then you're looking and getting prepared for that start date and time. So you're looking at what, what do I have access to? Where is the information? what are some of the things I might be doing and you're sort of collecting some information on what you might be doing for that. All, another thing too if you're trying to to get more active or if, even if you're trying to change your nutrition you're gonna look at your environment and you're gonna prepare your environment for that. I'm, I'm trying to eat healthier, I'm trying to get more active. I was someone who played a lot of sports growing up so my motivator for me was I wanted to be good at my sport so I would work out to be better at my sport and more fit for my sport. Now that I'm old and broken and I'm not playing, I'm not able to, to play sports anymore due to health reasons, I've had to look at sort of what am I going to be doing instead and what will I have access to and what, how will I set up my environment to be more fit. Uh, and nutritionally too, so if you're setting up your environment, you want to make sure that you put all the healthier things in view so you can see them. Right? They, when I opened the fridge this morning in the freezer, first thing I saw was my Greek yogurt, I saw my berries, I saw my, my uh, skim milk powder and things like that to make my shake. So that's what I made this morning. Right? So you're putting those things in your environment that are going to make you successful. So when you're setting your goal, you want to sort of look at your overall goal. So maybe if it's weight loss or 
if you're trying to, to actually work from home and set up an office or whatever it might be, you want to set SMART goals. And I think I had mentioned this to you in one of my other videos. And, and it really does help a little bit. So SMART goals are things that it's usually the acronym for uh, setting up your goals. So you want to be specific. So you're looking at where, when, how, who, why, and all those things. So if, it's, if you're going to be setting up Let's say you're going to try to sort of exercise more. You're going to say on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, specifically from 12 to 1, I'm going to walk 60 minutes from here to Kingston, for example, from my house to Kingston and back. Okay, so you're going to be very specific timing, what you're going to be doing, when, where, and how, and you have to write that down. If it was nutrition, okay, maybe the first thing you might set for a goal is you're going to drink water every day and you carry around that water bottle with you and you're going to fill it up every morning and you're going to fill it up after lunch and you're getting more specific measurable so how can you measure your goals so keeping track of what you're doing and your successes and and being able to sort of measure what you're doing um, can also be helpful because if you're saying that you're going to be walking for 60 minutes and you're you want to measure that okay how long you know you walk for 60 minutes and then later on you might say, I want to walk jog um, for 30 minutes and I'm going to track how many minutes I walked, how many minutes I jogged. So you're measuring that to see what you're doing. Okay? You're also doing that with food, for example, if you're using nutrition as an example. You would be measuring your vegetables. So you're gonna have, if you're someone who hates vegetables and you want to get more vegetables in, you might be measuring, I'm going to have a half a cup of broccoli with my lunch Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So you're measuring the amount that you're going to be having. You're keeping track of that. Is it attainable? So when we're looking at attainable. You want to make sure that you're, um, is it a goal that's really acceptable to you? Is it something that you can put time into? Is there going to be other obligations uh, that might get in your way? So you're evaluating the attainability of it. Is it something that's realistic? Is it something that I can be, I'm able to be able to finish? Also looking at, Relevancy and realistics, <clears throat> being realistic. So the goal that you're setting, it, how relevant is that to you? How realistic is it? And my, are my goals set realistically? And are my expectations of how I'm going to reach my goal realistic? Are you setting things that are maybe outside of your boundaries or that are not really realistic? I usually get friends and family members to help me with this. I'm very fortunate. I work at the fitness and sports center and I have a lot of people around me that can, I can show them my goal and say, do you think this is realistically attainable for me? Is this something that you think that I, I'd be able to do at my age and at my fitness level? So you're looking at that. Also looking at your skills. Um, I just started doing my basement workout and I started doing aerobics and, uh, my skills for aerobics, I'm a little, I'm a little uncoordinated, but, uh, but I needed that motivation. So I'm doing these online aerobics programs because I need that extrinsic motivation. I need other people to motivate me. And the, and the workouts that I've picked are helping because they're, they're extrinsically helping me. And I, you know, my skills are getting better, but I, I, it's realistic. It's not anything that's too crazy. You're also looking at time so how much time do you have to set for for the goals that you're setting for yourself whether they're um, for health or whether the goals are for work okay how much time can you spend towards reaching the goal that you set for yourself okay so how much time and you're also looking at type I like to put the fit principle in here too as well when I'm looking at type and time um, frequency intensity uh, time and type so I like to put those in there to see how, how often, how intense, how much time, and what type of activities will I be doing. And you can, you can apply it to work. You know, what type of work will you be doing from what time? Okay, so getting, getting yourself, um, I think I talked about procrastination too in my last health promotion short. So making sure that you're getting yourself organized. Getting your environment organized for you to be able to be successful to reach the goal that you set for yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself too, right? Set a plan B 
and evaluate your goal as you're going through and see how you're making out. So when you're tracking how you're doing, you want to track your successes. You also want to track the things that aren't going so well for you so that you can reevaluate and put other strategies in there. Also too, if you keep track of, of the goal that you're setting, sometimes we fall off the rails a little bit and it's happened to me, it's happened to people I know. You can go back to what you tracked. You can take a look at the successes that you've had. Right? And then you can go back and say, oh, that worked well, that worked well. Oh, this was one of my barriers from before. This is how I overcame that. So you keep track of the goals that you're setting for yourself. Ah, accountability. So look for accountability because if I set a goal for myself in secret, I can secretly not attain that goal. So personally, I need to look for support. I need to look for someone to hold me accountable. Uh, take a look at my tracking, make sure I'm doing it. That's one of the things that we do in our weight wellness lifestyle program. Jeanette's really good at holding people accountable, um, checking people's tracking books. Um, she also has Fitbits that she uses with her weight wellness class so she can attach those and go on her computer and see if people are actually doing the steps that they're supposed to be doing. So having that little bit of accountability can help you stretch and grow and sort of move you and keep you propelled forward to reach your goal. Give yourself a reward too. So if you've reached the goal and you've reached the first phase of your goal, give yourself an, uh, an award. Ta-da! No, a reward for, for doing that. And of course, a lot of the times too, you should be breaking down your goal into compartments. Okay, so as you reach the first compartment, you give yourself a reward for that. And so set some reward, rewards down in place. Ah, where are you in the stages of change? I mean, or Nicole. Jeanette did a good job last week talking about the stages of change. Okay, so you might flip around in those a little bit. So she did a, she did a really good job talking, talking about um, lapses. So if, if you are lapsing, make sure you go back to the preparation phase again and see maybe there's some preparation in there that you didn't do. So go back into the preparation phase and then move yourself back into the action phase and then back into maintenance and continue on from there. And then you look at what's next. Okay, so now I'm, I've done this. I've been doing my basement workouts now for eight weeks, let's say, and now, I, now the weather's nice. What's next? So maybe I'm going to start reassessing the goals that I set for myself. Maybe I've reached part of the goals that I set for myself and maybe... Over here, I'm still not quite at the, the, the area of which I want to be at now. So maybe the basement's getting boring and I want to do something different. And now that the weather's great, I can be able to get outside and, and try and do other things. So you go back and see what's next if you're starting to sort of get bored with what you're doing. A lot of the times when you're setting goals, especially if it's for physical activity or nutrition, sometimes usually after around 12 weeks or so, you, you want to change things up a little bit. Write down to before you get going to how can you prevent lapses so again going back to your barriers that your demotivators how can you prevent lapses from happening or if a lapse ha happens what are you going to do about it so getting prepared getting organized write things down getting your environment in a, in a, a looking at your environment making sure that your environment is going to be helping you be successful in the goal that you're reaching that is a little bit on motivation. So I, I'm trying to see who's here. Hi, Brian, Rob, uh, Mike, hey, Lappy, Karen. Uh, yeah, so it's nice to see you guys out here saying hello to me. I hope you're doing okay, and I hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Jeanette is up on Thursday. You're going to want to see her uh, coffee break briefing. She's going to be doing one on... Top fuel for top performance. So how to fuel yourself before, during, and after physical activity, which is great. People are getting outside and getting active and hiking and doing more things. And a her Monday health promotion short, she's going to come, she's going to provide you with a recipe for homemade uh, sports drinks. So tune into that next Monday. So uh, it was nice seeing you all here. Have a great Monday. And I will see you soon. Thanks for coming out. Bye. I'm off to work, actually. I get to go to work three half days a week now. So I'm heading over to the gym uh, to go in and get my office ready. So that's promising. If, I, if we're getting out into the gym and to work, uh, that's a good thing. I think things are coming. Things are going to start moving. I'm hoping. We'll keep our thumbs up. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.